Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health. I'm Michelle Krosmer, renal dietitian, here with Dr. Sean Hashmi, nephrologist. And we are answering the question, is dairy hard on the kidneys? So to get started with that, Dr. Hashmi, can you explain the research on dairy and kidney disease and any pros or cons of consuming it? You know, I, I think, Michelle, that the two questions that are probably the most controversial in kidney disease is eggs and it's dairy. And for all of the years that you and I have been doing this, these are probably the two questions we get asked more so than anything else. So if you guys haven't watched our episode on eggs, please check that out because we get asked about it all the times. And so if we've done that. It should be up and you should definitely check that out. Now with dairy, what's really interesting is let's talk a little bit about uh, milk and then we'll get into the other forms of dairy like you know, cheese, etc., and so forth. But when we talk about milk, what's interesting is this milk is a fascinating liquid because it has more than 50 types of hormones. Now, these hormones we've talked about in the past because these are the hormones that are needed for the baby calf development. They're not the hormones that are needed for you and I to develop. And part of that is, is because some of those things are so similar to us that part of the mechanism for type one diabetes is because of the fact that you can have those similarities and cause there to be a reaction where your body ends up attacking our own pancreas. So that's part of the issue that ends up happening. Now with cows, there's this whole thing where cows end up being bred and they're bred in a certain way because they're trying to have them produce more of the insulin-like growth factor one, or IGF-1. And the concept there is that they're basically designed so that they're pregnant almost all the time. And the hope that you know the breeders are doing is so that they can keep producing milk all the time. And in order for them to produce milk, they essentially have to be pregnant. And this is a very inhumane type of practice, but what ends up happening is their concentrations of progestin and estrogen inside their bodies tend to be very high. Now, that's important. The second part of this that ends up being important is in our other videos, we've talked about the role of things like leucine. Leucine is very important because it's one of the essential amino acids where it's very important in muscle growth. So it sounds like an excellent thing. You need it to be able to develop muscles. In our dialysis population, we talk about the fact that the reason it's important is because loss of muscle is directly correlated with early death. But let's flip that argument around a little bit. What about in people who don't necessarily need all that leucine? Well, what ends up happening with leucine is it also turns on your mTOR pathway. Now, mTOR pathway sounds excellent because it's going to allow you to build lots of muscle. But if you're looking to live longer, some of the things that are really important in longevity research is to shut off the mTOR pathway because the longer the mTOR pathway stays up, the more likely you are to die sooner. So mTOR pathway, actually what it does is it causes cells to replicate faster. The more the cells replicate, the more likely they are to form cancer cells. So you actually are trying to get mTOR to shut off. And that's why you're trying to reduce leucine in the body. So what's the take home message over here when it comes to things like cow's milk? Well, because cows are bred to produce higher IGF-1, that's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for anything that's going to give you more IGF-1. You're not looking for anything that's going to give you more leucine because you're not looking for anything that's going to drive more mTOR. Does that make sense? It does. And is there anything for, other, I mean, people always ask then about like cheese and what about yogurt, anything specifically for that and kidney disease? Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to other things like dairy products, like cheese and so forth. So what's, what's fascinating about it is let's move away from milk. Let's go to dairy products, low fat dairy products. When you don't have well-established kidney disease, they tend to actually be protective. And that's what the data shows. So early on in the game, you're actually doing better. Even when we look at not just low fat, there's some studies out there right now. There's one that was looking at the Iran population, specifically Tehran population. This was with 2,400 CKD adults. Average age was 38. They took in higher intakes of high fat dairy. And what they found 
was that they actually had lower incidence of developing CKD. And the reason this ends up being important for us to understand is, is that both we have data on high fat and low fat dairy in that it reduces the risk of developing chronic kidney disease. And that's important for us to understand. Now, once you have kidney disease, as it progresses, dairy is very high in phosphorus and phosphorus is going to cause precipitation inside your blood vessels is going to harden them up. So the more advanced your kidney disease, the more dairy is going to cause damage. Earlier on, the data supports that it actually can be lowering the risk of developing kidney disease. So if you're confused about the issue of dairy and you hear mixed messages, it's because earlier on, it lowers the risk. Later on, it actually makes the whole situation worse. In general, Milk, there's really no good redeeming quality. So for cow's milk, it's really just sugar. And if you're looking at 2% or if you're looking at 1% or if you're looking at non-fat, you're just increasing the amount of sugar with as you go down on the percentage of fat. If you go from 2% to 1% to essentially zero fat milk, all you're doing is increasing the sugar inside the milk. And all that's gonna do is make the situation worse. So milk doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities. When you start to get into things like Greek yogurt, et cetera, that don't have added sugar, that's there. And anything that says it's got fruit in it, you might as well just call it dessert. If you're trying to give your kids something, add the fruit yourself. Definitely, yeah. If you're consuming yogurt, plain, unsweetened, and flavor it yourself. So Michelle, so since we're, we're <clears throat> on this dairy subject, what about plant-based options for, for folks who are you know, really trying to get away from animal products? Yeah, there are tons and tons of dairy alternatives now on the market because plant-based is becoming more and more popular, um, which there's pros and cons of that. So let's go through some of those alternatives. So first, starting with plant-based milks. In general, they're usually going to be lower in protein, potassium, and phosphorus compared to cow's milk. Um, the exception would be like soy milk or pea protein milk usually would be higher in protein, also a little bit higher in potassium and phosphorus like um, cow's milk is. But your nut milks, oat milk, those sorts of things, it's a big, it's a small amount of the actual nut and a larger amount of water. So because of that, they tend to be lower in potassium, phosphorus, and protein. Now, having said that, um, fortified plant milks. So they are fortifying them with calcium and vitamin D usually. And oftentimes based on what they use to do that, there could be phosphorus additives in that. So I would say if you are getting a fortified plant milk, you want to check the ingredient list. Um, one, make sure there's no added sugar, that it's just a plain unsweetened variety, and then make sure there's no phosphorus additives. You can always make your own plant milk at home. Um, that's super easy. Lots of recipes online. Another thing that you could do, there are some brands where if you read the label, it's only water, the nut or the, you know, the oat or whatever it is, and maybe a little bit of salt. Um, some brands like Elmhurst or Simply Almond Almond Milk, um, those are brands. Even Trader Joe's has a soy milk and they have one variety of an oat milk that doesn't have um, anything else added to it. So Getting then into plant cheeses, I would say that's the one where, honestly, like if you are fully giving up cheese because you're going plant-based, don't rely on these plant-based cheeses. They're very high in sodium. They're usually very high in saturated fat because of the oils that they're using. Um, it can be, you know, a, a treat on occasion that you have it, but I wouldn't say that if you, oh, you're not adding cheese to you know, your meal every day, if you use a uh, plant-based cheese that you're not getting a benefit from that. And you're probably getting a lot of saturated fat and salt with that. Um, having said that though, there are so many recipes online to make your own plant-based or vegan cheeses. Usually they'll use something like cashews or another nut and then nutritional yeast. There's uh, like nacho everywhere from nacho cheese to feta cheese to making like a brie or block cheese recipes. And so when you make it yourself, yes, it takes more effort and time, um, but you can control the ingredients and what actually goes into it. 
um, plant-based yogurts, lots and lots of options. As we mentioned, whether it's a plant-based yogurt or regular yogurt, you want to make sure that it's a plain unsweetened, and then you add your own fruit, cinnamon, um, anything like that to it. Even if you were adding maple syrup or honey, if you control how much goes into it, you can add a teaspoon, which is four grams of sugar, where most of these are going to have 12 um, grams of sugar in them. For plant-based varieties, check the ingredient list, make sure there's no phosphorus additives. Usually coconut, cashew, and almonds would be the base for a plant-based yogurt. Um, so that's something that you would look for. And um, again, lots and lots of recipes online. That is always going to be the best thing. I make my own coffee creamer out of cashew, cashews, dates, and vanilla extract and water. It is the best coffee creamer I've ever had. My husband, I have family members, I have clients that have all made it. Yeah, you have to make it at home. It takes a little time, but again, it's so much better and knowing the ingredients and it make a better dairy free alternative for someone with kidney disease. So um, Dr. Hashmi, anything you want to add or summarize for that? Is dairy hard no. on kidneys? <laughs> No, I think this is great. And I think, you know, the, just the bottom line as far as take home goes is, is we just try to present you guys the information. Ultimately, you want to be able to take the information we present you guys, do your own research and take the nuggets out of this and apply it. Yep. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys.